and welcome back to the Pioneer Home. My name is Jenna Lee and I'm so glad you are here. Today I am sharing with you some really good comforting meals that we've been eating this winter. During winter time, I enjoy so much just cozying up, kind of hibernating in a way, and just making comforting, delicious, nourishing meals for my family. When I think of classic comfort foods, pasta and soups and stews really make the list. But what makes them different or what makes them seasonal is the ingredients that you put into them. So this mac and cheese is made with butternut squash and it really gives it that rich, vibrant orange color that maybe you would find in a processed mac and cheese. And it just made my family so excited to eat this mac and cheese. The three meals I'm gonna share with you today are all made from scratch nourishing and made with foods that are in my food storage you know come february you really are using up those root vegetables whatever is left in the pantry and um, really working the vegetables that are available this time of year This year, we felt really blessed to harvest some deer on our own property. And so I've been putting in venison in quite a bit of things. I don't know if it would surprise you to know that I actually grew up in a major city out on the West Coast. But even though we lived in the city, we harvested and hunted our own meat. And so we had a lot of elk and a lot of deer growing up. And so I'm really used to having that in the freezer during the year. But I was really surprised to find that this deer over here in Missouri tastes a lot different than the sagebrush fed deer that maybe I'm used to getting out west. And I know it has a lot to do with what this deer was eating. We live in a farmland that has a lot of corn and soybeans. But I still am really accustomed to adding a fat like sausage or bacon to my deer and wild game just to give it some richness and flavor and some fat since it is really a lean meat. You know, we put a lot of emphasis on finding and sourcing good organic or grass fed beef and meats, but I am always going to root for some wild game because it's all of those things naturally. And it is really a good source of lean, good meat. I'm kind of laughing at myself how passionate I get about talking about food. It's so funny. I could sit here and talk to you about good food all day long. <laughs> but just make note that I am adding some flour to um, this meat before I'm adding the liquids. You can make this as thick as you want to, um, but just keep that in mind. I'm also keeping the flavors really simple here, but I added some Worcestershire and some Dijon mustard and just a sprig of rosemary. Today I'm using some cute little new potatoes. So I'm gonna let them cook a little bit longer than the rest of my vegetables. And if you want to use regular potatoes, that's fine. Just chop those up. You could chop them to about the same size as your carrots and celery and throw them all in together. Just keep it really simple and do whatever works for you. How long do you think people have been making, well, stew? I bet you it's been hundreds of years, actually, maybe thousands. But I can picture my great, great, great grandma out here on the open plains making a rabbit or deer stew or whatever meat her husband harvested and just making the best of what vegetables she had down in her root cellar and maybe throwing in some dried herbs. And so I think the key and, and the basis of this recipe or of any stew is just the simplicity of the flavors, letting them shine through, cooking that meat down so whatever wild game meat you're cooking with, or maybe it's beef too, that it's tender and soft and everything is all melded together. And that right there, 
that's the beauty of a simple stew. I love winter squash. I love every kind of squash. And I especially love the fact that it was created with the purpose of lasting us through long periods of time. Time of drought, cold seasons where food is scarce, and it's full of vitamins and rich with nutrients that we really need during these long months without a lot of fresh produce. Another beautiful thing is that you don't have to live on a farm. You don't even have to grow it yourself. You can buy winter squash and other winter vegetables and store them in many ways. I stocked up on a variety of winter squashes from the Amish community near where we live. Um, but don't worry, I have plenty of seeds that I've already purchased and a humongous garden plot that I cannot wait to grow a whole bunch of my own for this next year. So for this butternut squash macaroni and cheese, I am roasting up on this pan butternut squash, onions, and a big garlic cloves and just dousing them with some olive oil and some salt and pepper. and a secret ingredient <laughs> called nutmeg not so secret but of course it's a great it's a great pair to go with any squash you're gonna bake this at 400 degrees for about 30 minutes yes i'm baking mine higher than that but i really think my oven cooks a little bit cooler A key to cooking from scratch is understanding how to make a few key things. And when you know how to make those few things, it's like having a few pillars that everything else stands on. And one of those is knowing how to make a good cream sauce. And that comes with knowing how to make a roux. And we'll talk about what that is in a minute. But the beginning of a roux has to start with a fat. So today we are going to be using sausage links, not only for the protein in this macaroni and cheese, but also for making that roux. So you can cook your sausage links whole on about medium heat. Just let them kind of slowly sizzle in the frying pan and make sure that they're cooked all the way through, but nice and slow, all the juices come out of it. And um, you can use that to make your sauce. I'm also using these beautiful Italian noodles that I picked up from Home Goods the other day. I always get really excited when I can find imported goods, um, especially Italian pastas. Most Italian pastas were made with the purpose for a certain sauce. And so the traditional macaroni noodle, it was made so the creamy sauce could go inside the center of the noodle. Today I'm using cavatelli, um, which can do the same thing. But keep that in mind, you can use any pasta that you think will go good with this. So now to making the roux. I remember when I used to mess this up so much and get so nervous about making roux. <laughs> but it's really can be quite simple. So I'm starting out with the sausage drippings by adding one fourth or so a cup of all purpose flour. And I slowly whisk that into the fats. And then I'm ladling off the cream from this fresh milk that I sourced from an Amish farm and I just alternate adding the flour and the cream and whisking that together until I get the consistency that I'm looking for. Just remember that the longer that this roux simmers the thicker it will get and sometimes you just need to let it simmer to activate that thickening with the flour and the liquids and let that flour soak up your liquids. Once it has, and it's nice and creamy and thick, then you can add whatever cheese you're working with. I'm using some cheddar cheese today. And if you want it to be thinner, just add more liquid. And if you want it to be thicker, just let it simmer longer. Mm -hmm. 
So once your butternut squash is nice and tender and all the onions are translucent and everything is cooked, go ahead and put it into a blender or your KitchenAid or whatever to finish making the sauce. And we're also going to add this creamy sauce. I think adding a cup and a half to two cups of butternut squash is perfect for this recipe. And you can always save the extra butternut squash that maybe you've roasted for another recipe, maybe adding to a salad or a soup. This is also a good time to check and make sure that the salt is just right and adding whatever other flavors you need. If you wanna be really sneaky, you don't even have to tell your kids that there's butternut squash in here. I have a kid who wouldn't think he liked it as much if he knew there was butternut squash in here. But with the garlic and the onions and the cream and the cheese, there's so much flavor and that butternut squash just adds that bit of nutrients and sweetness and it is quite delicious. So I wanted to show you the salad that I've been making all winter long when I'm in a pinch and I'm trying to get dinner on the table and it's I need a green or a veggie real quick. So for winter salad, I usually like to pull in all the veggies that are in season. I'm thinking cabbage and kale, radishes, and purple onions and all these things that you'd normally find you know in a winter garden and I throw them all together you don't have to think when it comes to a salad I spread lettuce and ranch every time you can throw in whatever's in season um, cranberries and nuts and that way you don't get so sick of salad We were just sitting down to eat when my husband called and said, bring a bucket of water, hurry. And that's never a good thing. <laughs> Everything's fine. He just had a burn pile going and needed a second hand so it didn't get out of hand. We are preparing a spot for a root cellar and I uh, just wanna take a break from this video to show you what we're working on over here. Yes, this is our garden plot for this next year. It's huge. So I'm sure at some point this old house had a root cellar of some sort, but it is no longer. So in order to store our harvest for next year, we are putting in a good old fashioned primitive <laughs> root cellar <laughs> and um today we are digging the hole for this so it's pretty exciting i can't wait to share more about this project in the future with you guys so stay tuned i don't think i've ever shared this here on the channel but i love international foods, especially curries uh, from Thailand. I love Indian curries. I love Moroccan spices. All of those rich, colorful flavors. And I think they're perfect for this time of year when it's really cold outside. They bring a lot of heat and a lot of warmth and they just smell so good simmering on the stove. So today I'm making a chicken Moroccan lentil stew and I'm going to add some chicken thighs to mine because, well, my family prefers it that way. But you could easily skip the chicken and go straight to adding the onions and the garlic and sauteing them in some olive oil with all of your spices. The spices I'm gonna use today are cinnamon and coriander and some cumin and smoked paprika and some chili pepper flakes for heat.
and your kitchen is gonna smell so good and warm and spicy. After you've added all your spices and salt, you're gonna add a can of tomatoes. This was a fresh can of tomatoes I made this summer that I could not get open for the life of me. <laughs> um, you're also gonna add some water. From that point, you can add your vegetables. Today I'm doing carrots and celery, keeping it super simple. And then we're gonna add our lentils. Then I'm gonna add a can of chickpeas to this and let all the lentils cook and everything simmer for at least 20 to 30 minutes. After 20 minutes, you can check and see if the lentils and the vegetables are cooked through. For some reason, my lentils took a little bit longer this time, so I cooked mine for about 30 minutes. To be totally honest with you, most of the time I just throw this all into my Instapot and it cooks really quickly. If I want like a super quick week night meal, I often go for this one in the Instapot. Um, or if I'm looking for a vegetarian meal for the evening with no meat, this is also a go-to for me. And you can top this off with some coconut cream. Um, or today I'm using some homemade yogurt and some cilantro or parsley or even a slice of crusty homemade sourdough bread. That's my favorite. I'm gonna put a link down in the description box for a recipe card for each of these meals. All you have to do is click on that link and you'll be led to my subscribers library where I have printouts of other recipe cards that you can find there. If you love this video, you'll also love my other videos on cooking from scratch, something that I'm really passionate about. And also eating in season and all those things that you do when you are living on the farm, trying to get back to the basics. So look for those videos as well. I've been thinking about putting a seasonal meal planner together for each season. So let me know if that's something that you would be interested in. And um, let me know down in the comments, press that like button. And this next week, my goal is to dive into the entryway project. Um, stay tuned for that. I'm putting up a wall treatment and it's not what I expected it to be. It may have something to do with old tongue and groove flooring. So stay tuned for that guys. Thanks for stopping by. Love you lots. <laughs>